Well, thank you all for coming tonight, and thank you especially to the organizers for having me, Jim, Duane, and especially Tom and Reiko, because I was just looking at my calendar. I've been using WordPress for 10 years, two months, one week, and five days today. And I've been coming to these meetups for about seven years, and you two have been there the whole time. Kurt and James were running the event when I started showing up, and you were sitting in the back filming it. And when they stopped showing up, you stepped forward and started running the event. I know how hard it is to keep an organization like this going. So thank you very much. So my name is Ken Gagney, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about podcasting. Uh, how many people here listen to podcasts? A lot of you. Great. For those who just raised their hands, how many listen to Serial? Wow. It's usually just the opposite. It's like, oh, Serial is the only podcast I listen to, actually. But you're the only one. Good job. <laughs> oh, there were a few Serial fans? Okay. I actually haven't listened to it yet. I mean, I like my cornflakes as much as the next person, but I just can't bring myself to listen to a podcast about it. So uh, for those of you, how many people here run podcasts, like hosts podcasts? What's your podcast about? Uh, I, I do one for a variety show out of um, Binghamton, New York. Excellent. Okay. Well, if you have anything to chime in at it's any not point. It's mine. I, it's my client's. Oh, okay. So I, I, I deal yeah. with it. I host it, but I don't. Oh, you're not I the. don't listen to it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I don't, li I don't listen to my right. podcast either. <laughs> so you're not the on-air talent. No. Okay. So you're a host in the WordPress host's yes, sense of WordPress the word. Person. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I do both kinds of hosting for several podcasts. I want to talk to you tonight about some, uh, these are the questions you'll be able to answer by the time the evening is over. Why should you podcast? What do I, what do you, should you podcast about? What hardware do you need to podcast? What software do you need to podcast? How do you configure WordPress, of course? And most importantly, before we get to any of that, the question I need to answer is, why should you be listening to me? Why am I up here and not over there? So a little bit about me. I got my start in podcasting at Computer World Magazine. They've been around for about 50 years. They are located right in Framingham. It's the same company that does Mac World and PC World. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the, the founder of Computer World also founded the Brain Research Center here at MIT. So I was doing the editing for the podcast there. I then went ahead and launched my own brand, my own YouTube channel, actually, where I do uh, technology reviews and software and entertainment. My day job is at Mass Eye and Ear, where we use Sitecore as our CMS, which is very different from WordPress. And by night, I teach at Emerson in the publishing department, where we do get to use WordPress. So of these four, that might be one of my favorite jobs. Hey, you pass. A plus. Excellent. Emerson. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah. I, I graduated and stayed there. So uh, so not only the Computer World podcast, but my first WordPress podcast was the Open Apple podcast that I launched about six years ago, this month in fact. It is a niche podcast about Apple II computers, which came out in 1977 and the people who still use them. I then did a podcast about multiple sclerosis, and then I also now host a podcast about indie games, interviewing people who make their own video games, and another podcast about marginalized voices in the tech industry. So these are four podcasts I've launched. The bottom two are ones that I still host to this day. Uh, they've been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to introducing you to the fun that is podcasting with WordPress. Now, podcasting has gotten much more popular over the last decade or so. Can anybody guess why podcasting is getting more popular? I mean, video is so sexy and so easy to monetize and gets a lot of eyeballs, but podcasting is going up. Anybody have a theory why? It's easy to listen to it in the car. You can put it on Bluetooth. You can put it on your phone. Yep. You think about it. It reloads. It's a nice app yep. podcast for public. Yep. You can do it in the background. requires less attention. And you use the magic word. You put it on your phone. As smartphone ownership grows, podcast listening ship grows. It used to be when podcasts started about 15 years ago, people would have to sit down at their computer to listen to it. Now you can just put it on your mobile device. You can see that this green line that's going down is podcast listening on desktops. And from 2012 to 2016, it just plummeted as smartphone listening went up. 
more and more people listen to podcasts on their phones. They don't need a separate MP3 player like an iPod. They just put it on their smartphone. And most people who listen to podcasts listen to multiple podcasts. 21% of people only listen to one, but 22% listen to two, 20% listen to three. There are even some people like me who listen to 11 or more. They just listen to all the podcasts. It's addicting. And not only is it great to be listening to podcasts, but it's a unique opportunity to be creating podcasts because there are a lot of blogs out there. There are a lot of WordPress blogs out there. And you know how hard it can be to stand out in the blogging community. No matter what topic you've chosen, there's probably already a blog out there on that same topic. But that's not necessarily true for podcasts. For any one podcast on a topic, there's about 905 blogs on that subject. There are a lot of topics that don't have any podcasts whatsoever. I had an idea for a podcast a couple of years ago. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go reserve the domain name and I'll get to it sometime. And six months later, I hadn't found the time yet. And I thought, oh, well, surely somebody's moved into that space by now and I'll be a Johnny come lately. But I looked and there was still nobody podcasting on that topic. It's very easy, actually, to find a topic that is very niche and that you're passionate about and that nobody else is discussing. All those podcasts that I have done, the Apple II podcast, the Multiple Sclerosis podcast, I did my market research and I couldn't find anybody else doing those things. I was the podcast for that subject, which was really exciting and a great opportunity. It's also a great opportunity to represent different voices because whereas blogging is pretty much 50-50 between the two binary genders, with podcasting, it's mostly dudes' voices on the air. And so podcasting needs more women, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons why all my podcasts are interview-based. I bring different guests on the show every week, and I let them do the talking. I ask them questions, because people don't want to listen to me talk. So this is a great opportunity to make that pie chart a little bit more even. So that is how much more popular podcasting has gotten and why you should be doing it. What should you podcast about? Pretty much anything, like I said your favorite books, movies, or games, local holes in the wall. If you have a geographically restricted audience, they'll be very attentive to your podcast because you're talking directly to them. Uh, local history or family history. You can be interviewing people. I've interviewed my dad multiple times about entertainment through the ages. You know, like I grew up with Atari, he grew up with Kick the Can. You know, I grew up with Star Trek The Next Generation, he grew up with Star Trek. And we talked about how these things compare and contrast. Uh, so you can do interviews with people, uh, not only family, but like I said, developers, people with multiple sclerosis, people who use old Apple computers, people with weird stories. Everybody has a story to tell. And if you give them the opportunity to talk about themselves, they'll take it. You can really podcast about anything. The more focused it is, the more likely you are to stand out. If you just say, oh, I'm going to play a game every week or I'm going to watch a movie every week, there are a lot of podcasts about that. But one of my favorite podcasts is where he interviews actors who were in famous films but were not the stars. Like for Captain America Winter Soldier, he interviewed the guy who played the Apple Genius Bar guy who, hap who helped Captain America try to hack into a computer. That was the whole episode. Uh, he interviewed somebody from Groundhog Day, the guy who played the insurance salesman. Not, not Bill Murray, but Bing. And that was a great podcast. The important thing is to have more to talk about than what did you do this week. You know, oh, you know, it's Friday again. Here's what happened since last Friday. Here's what I saw. Here's what I did. The more niche it is, the more focus it is, like I said, the less competition you'll have and the more listeners you'll have. Consider having a co-host because it's important to have somebody to keep you honest and to keep you committed. If it's just you doing the show, it's very easy to say, oh, I've had a long week. I really don't want to podcast this weekend. I'm going to take this weekend off. I'll get back on track next week. But that's kind of like cheating on your diet, and it's very hard to get back on. If you have somebody, though, that you need to be there for, you know that Steve or Randy is going to be there at 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. that weekend waiting for you, then you're going to be there. And it works both ways. They'll be there because you'll be there. And you'll develop that synergy, and people will be attracted to that as opposed to just listening to a monologue. Figure out how long each episode is going to be. Scientific American has several one-minute podcasts that come out every day. It's a set length and a set schedule. 
one minute every day. It's like reading the abstract on a scientific paper. There are other podcasts that are 30 minutes every week or 30 minutes every month. One hour is probably the most I would go because then people have to listen to it over multiple segments and they start to lose track of what you were talking about. But whatever the length is, settle on that and, and stick to it. If you say you're going to do a five-minute podcast then you release a one-hour episode, people are going to be like, what the? I didn't budget the time for this. You promised me five minutes. And I just got, it's going to throw them off. So stick to a length and stick to a publishing schedule. Every week, every two weeks, at least once a month. I know one guy who does an annual podcast. I, I, I don't know why he bothers, <laughs> but he does it. It's, it's what works for him. I guess he just sets that time aside. Every February 5th, that one hour is set aside. Sorry, I'm busy that weekend. Got to record my podcast. Try me next weekend. So what hardware do you need? This was my first podcast recording studio. It's very expensive, and it wasn't mine, which is the only way I could get away with it. I was working at Computer World Magazine. They had their own studio, and they said I could come in on the weekends and use it for my little projects, which was great. You don't need anything quite this expensive. What I use now is that, a USB headset. It costs about 50 bucks. I plug it into my computer, and that's it. That's the only purchase I've had to make to record my podcast. I talk to people over Skype, I record it, and then I edit it, and that's it. You can get fancier. You can buy a Yeti microphone, which costs about 100 bucks, and that has multiple settings. It can record right in front of you. It can record both sides in case you're interviewing somebody, or it can record the entire room. Or you can get what's called a Zoom H4n Pro, which is about 200 bucks, and it has dual microphones on the top, as well as what's called an XLR input on the bottom. This is a very high quality audio input. If you're trying to jack into a soundboard, that's what you would use is that kind of cable, as opposed to the eighth inch audio jack on your iPhone, for example, or the old iPhones, I guess. And uh, you can also even just plug in external mics into this thing and plug them into the XLR port. So I have all three of these and I use them for different occasions. The one that I use the most and the one that I cannot do without is the USB headset. Quality is perfectly adequate. You want to get here, there are lots of products you can buy. For example, this stand that the microphone is in is called a shock mount. Because if you just take a microphone and put it on a desk, well, it might pick up the vibrations of the computer and the fan that's on that desk. Or if somebody bumps into the desk, it's going to pick that up. A shock mount will absorb those vibrations. In front of it, which looks like a strainer. Except instead of catching spaghetti and letting the water go through, it catches what's called plosives. Words that begin with P, which a microphone would normally pick up and sound very sharp. Actually, filter out that headphones. It works great. It's magic. I don't know how it works. Software, besides WordPress, of course. All the software listed here is free and cross platform. So, Skype is what I use. It seems to be falling out of favor with some people. They prefer like Zoom or Discord or Google Hangouts. But Skype has a critical mass like Facebook does. Almost everybody is on it. If you ask somebody for their Skype handle, they'll probably give it to you as opposed to saying, oh, let me go install Skype. That's only happened once in the last 120 podcasts I've interviewed. Because one person did not have Skype. Audacity is what I use to edit. It's, like I said, free and cross-platform, so it's for Mac, PC, and Linux. And I do all my editing in that. I find the user interface very intuitive. There are much more expensive programs you can buy, like Logic for Apple, which is either two or $300. But you'll have, you're going to have to invest more time and money in figuring out how to use it, like taking a class, because Logic is very high end. Uh, you could do GarageBand, actually, if you have a Mac, and you have GarageBand, you could try editing in that. But I like Audacity because it is cross-platform. If I have somebody using Windows and I have a Mac, we can exchange projects very easily. Not true with GarageBand. And Levelator is another free program where when you're done editing your soft, all your audio, you just drag it into Levelator and it makes sure all the volume is pretty much consistent. So if one person gets louder or somebody else gets softer, it brings everybody into equilibrium. 
that better than what's built into Audacity to do the same thing? I know that level, I know that Audacity has that function, but every guide I've read by podcasters more experienced than me say to use Levelator. I've never really heard them explain why though. Maybe because it is drag and drop, but you don't have to fiddle with settings. Maybe it's just more idiot proof. I'm not sure, but that's a good question. Audacity does have a lot of features and functions and filters. Uh, if you want to record a Skype call, you might need to buy additional software for that. Skype does not have its own recording software built in. Uh, for the Mac, you can use Call Recorder. And for Windows, you can use Call Burner. There's also a great Mac program called Audio Hijack, which does a lot more. You can use it to record Skype as well as many other things, and that's a little bit more expensive. But for the sole single function and purpose of recording Skype, these two programs are designed specifically for that, and they work quite well. And finally, there's one more piece of software you need, and that is the right WordPress plugin. There are several WordPress plugins for podcasting. The one that I've tried and have settled on and used the most and I'm very happy with is PowerPress by Blueberry. At least I assume that's how it's pronounced. It's missing some vowels. Maybe it's blubbery. I'm not sure. That doesn't sound quite as flattering, though. So I'm going to go with Blueberry, especially given the blue circle behind it there. Uh, it has a ton of great features. It's well supported. They're constantly updating it, which is very important. You want to make sure your plugin is not going to be uh, abandoned. It uses an HTML5 player, so it's going to work on your desktop and your mobile devices, your listeners' devices, I mean. It supports audio and video in a variety of formats, MP3, MP4, uh, OGV, FLV, OGA. I don't know what half of those are, but that's what they support. And if you want to do multiple podcasts on one website, it can help you do that and separate them out as well. It's very easy to get up and running with Blueberry. You start it in simple mode, and it tells you to do three things. Fill out the settings on this page, create a blog post with an episode, and submit your podcast to iTunes, and you're done. You just follow those three steps, it walks you through them, and you're up and running with your first podcast. Once you've finished those first few steps, then you can switch to advanced mode, which have a lot more options and features that you can fine tune and tweak. But most of those are optional. You don't need to go through them to get up and running. I'll go over some other, I'll go over some specific settings for this podcast. But before you publish your first episode, there are two things you need. You need an episode and you need album artwork. Because most podcast directories like iTunes require that you have a first episode up before you submit it. That feels like a little bit of a chicken and egg because you want to say in your first podcast, oh, you can find us in iTunes, but you need to record your first podcast before you can put it in iTunes. So you need to record that first episode where you introduce yourselves and what you're going to be doing. You may actually want to have several episodes queued up and ready to go so that when people discover your podcast, they don't have to wait to see if you're going to do another one. They can immediately download episode two and episode three right away and get an idea for the trajectory of your show. So you need at least an episode in your album artwork, or in other words, an MP3 and a JPEG. After you've gone through all that editing I talked about in Audacity, you've recorded in Skype, you've edited it, you've dropped it into Levelator, you need to make sure it's an MP3, and you need to make sure it has ID3 tags. This is metadata for your audio file. This particular screenshot is from iTunes. You can also use Audacity where you did all your editing, but you want to put in all the information about your show, which is the episode name, your name, the album name, what year the episode came out, which track number or episode number it was, and a little description at the bottom, because all of this shows up in the person's MP3 player or in their iTunes directory or whatever sort of software they're using to catch your podcast. Now the cool thing is that Blueberry PowerPress can actually do all this for you. You can define the defaults in WordPress, and when you upload your MP3, it will attach all this metadata to the MP3 for you. You can automate it. The only thing you can't do is set a per episode comments or summary at the bottom there. But I don't know how many places that actually shows up. 
what this can do is do all the other stuff I mentioned. Title, artist, album, genre. It can automatically apply the current year. It can increment the episode number from the previous one plus one. It just does all this stuff automatically for you, which is very useful. It eliminates that additional step and lets you get your podcast uploaded that much faster. It can also apply the album artwork for you, but you need to create that initial JPEG and upload it to WordPress. Uh, album artwork has to be square. Here are the four podcasts that I showed you earlier. The minimum dimensions are 1400 by 1400 pixels, and the maximum is 3000 by 3000 pixels. And it has to be JPEG or PNG format. Now there are a lot of ideas. Uh, we, we could do a whole presentation about what makes good album artwork. How do you make it eye-catching? I will say that unless your podcast is actually about recording or podcasting, you don't need to put a microphone in your album artwork. It is so common that people do that. And I can understand why. Because it's this newfangled audio medium. It's like radio, but cooler. And you want to have a microphone. But that's every podcast. You probably want to stand out a little bit more than that. Just make sure it has your name. Uh, if you're going to use stock footage, make sure you have the rights to it. And that's a good start. And it meets those dimensions. And once you've applied your album artwork and your ID3 tags, then you're ready to attach the podcast to a WordPress post. It's just a typical post. It's not a new, it's not a custom content type. But Blueberry adds these additional metadata fields. And this is perhaps the one part of Blueberry that is not user friendly. And maybe I'm missing something. If I am, I hope somebody corrects me. And that part is getting the MP3 into WordPress. Sometimes these files are so big that you can't use the media library to upload it. Sometimes your media library will be putting things in specific month folders and you want all your podcasts in a folder called podcast. The only way I found to do either of these things is to FTP it to your folder. It's a plugin. Sorry? It's a plugin you can use at the server. I've, I've used that. Okay. <laughs> I, I've never put the two, two and two together though. Two and two. You Thank you. So there is a plugin called Add to Server, and that will let you upload large files. It will let you you upload it, and then it will let you add it to whatever folder you want. Oh, okay. It'll let you move it around. Do you, so to get it there in the first place, do you still need to use FTP, the file? Yeah. Okay. It lets you add it to your media. Okay. Library. Gotcha. What it does is it, it, you upload it, you add it to your media library, so you have access to it in WordPress. So that's what it Gotcha. Okay. Translates it for you. Gotcha. But, but if the file is of sufficient size, you still need to get it onto your server you somehow. Yeah. 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 So what I do is in my WP content slash uploads, I've made a new folder called podcast. And I just push all my episodes in there. And I gave that path name, content slash upload slash podcast, to preferences. And it sets so you can see I have a file name there. P3. These are not made up words for this demonstration. That was somebody I interviewed named Kung Fu Fruit Cup. And this is Polygamer episode number 60. And it's MP3. And so once I upload my file, I just type in that file name and click verify URL. And then the plugin does the rest. It automatically attaches it to that post, adds an MP3 player at the bottom which I'll show you in a second, and you're done. You can also define at the bottom there whether or not to use an explicit tag, which is, does your podcast contain explicit language? Such as, no, I'm just kidding. But based on what particular verbiage your guest or your host used, you may need to put an explicit tag on there. And that will show up in iTunes with a little red E next to it, so people know what to expect. The reason that Blueberry does their PowerPress plugin for free is because they want you to upload your MP3s to their server instead of yours. They say, oh, your podcast is going to be so popular that all those people downloading those big MP3 files, it's really going to slow you down. Chances are you don't need to start with their hosting software, though. You can wait until you get popular and then switch to their platform. And that will cost money if you switch to their platform. But if you just want to use their plugin and put your MP3s on your server, 
all this is completely free, which is great. As soon as you click verify URL, it'll automatically know the file size and the exact duration of your episode, and it will make that information available to your listeners. Good question. Yes. You keep mentioning iTunes. That, obviously, that's number one, but are there two, three, and four? Yes, and that is uh, three slides from now. Okay. Good question. You're ahead of the game. So once you have created that first episode, you're going to end up with an RSS feed, which you need to submit to places like iTunes, or which people will subscribe to your podcast with. Blueberry PowerPress will create that RSS feed for you. It's distinct from the RSS feed that comes with WordPress. Now, you can create category-specific feeds, which means that if you have multiple podcasts that you want people to listen to, not just episodes, but actual different podcasts like the four I do, you can put them all on one WordPress website and just make different categories for each one, and each one will have its own podcast feed. That feature is not enabled by default because WordPress, uh, PowerPress assumes you're only going to be doing one podcast. So you only need the one feed, and that feed follows a very easy format. It's your website.com slash feed slash podcast. And that will be a brand new feed created by PowerPress that contains only your podcast episodes and which is formatted for submission to directories such as iTunes and others. Now, if you're old school like me, you might be inclined to use FeedBurner, which is an RSS tool provided by Google. Please don't use FeedBurner. I can argue that FeedBurner is going to be deprecated and that Google doesn't love RSS tools, which is why they killed Reader. But really the issue is that there's, you're going to have two different parties fighting over your RSS feed. You're going to have Blueberry and you're going to have FeedBurner. And it gets really confusing. You don't know where to go for your analytics. You don't know if A is feeding into B or B is feeding into A. I've tried to make it work and I've been successful and I can't tell you how because I don't remember what I did. It's more complicated than it needs to be. So I recommend not using FeedBurner for your podcast feed. If you want to use it for your main feed, that's fine, but not your podcast. So now you have this RSS feed, you need to submit it to directories because people, that's where people find podcasts. They need to stumble across your show somehow, and when they go into iTunes or whatever their podcatcher is and they search for keywords, you want your podcast to show up. So the number one place you need to submit it is iTunes. Not only is that a very popular MP3 catcher, or podcast catcher, I mean, but it actually feeds other programs. Like Overcast is what I use on my iPhone. If my podcast is in iTunes, it'll show up in Overcast. Submit it separately. which is a very popular cross-platform listener, but especially on Android. Just in the past year, the Google Play Store started hosting podcasts. And I recommend you put it there as well. And one last one that you may not have heard of is TuneIn. Now, this is anecdotal. I haven't been able to test this, but what I've heard is that with the Amazon Echo, if you say, Alexa, play me so-and-so podcast, it depends on the TuneIn directory to fulfill that request. Your podcast needs to be in TuneIn for Alexa to say, okay, here's that episode. I think that's worth it. These are all absolutely free to submit to. Now, one thing I want to be upfront about if you're concerned about copyright and distribution is that Stitcher and Google Play will actually host a copy of your MP3 on their server. They're going to copy it into their directory. With the other two, iTunes and TuneIn, they're just going to pass listeners right through their directory back to you, and they're going to grab the MP3 directly from your server. But with these companies, they're actually going to host it themselves, and that won't show up in your WordPress analytics, because people aren't going to be coming to your site to listen to your music or your podcast. The reason they do this is because they then can put ads in front of and after the show, and maybe even during. I haven't heard that happen, but I think they have the right to it if you look at the user agreement. So if you are concerned about hosting your own audio, do not submit to these two. You might not get as many listeners, 
but you'll have more ownership over your MP3s. I do submit to them because I'm aware of the reality that once you put anything on the internet, you can't control it anyway. And also, most of my podcasts are published under Creative Commons. So people are allowed to copy them anyway. So I'm not going to try to stop these two from doing it. Once you've submitted your podcast to those four places, they will generate a URL specifically for your show in those directories. You want to get those URLs and plug them back into PowerPress. Under the advanced settings, it has fields for what is the URL to your iTunes podcast, your Google Play podcast, TuneIn, Stitcher, etc. And the reason you want to plug all those back in is because then those links can show up on your website. People come to your website and you can say, click here to find our show in Stitcher. Click here to find our show in iTunes. The main way that I do this is with this widget on the right. It says iTunes, Android, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and RSS. I use this widget, but I'm not crazy about it because it is so big. It's very tall and it pushes all my other widgets below the fold, which I'm not thrilled about. I wish it looked more like that other widget right above it with all my social media icons, where I can fit four icons on one row. I don't know why I can't do that with my podcasts. They said a future version of Blueberry will probably offer both versions, but in the meantime, it's not there. However, even if you don't use the widget, you do still want to tell Blueberry PowerPress where to find your show on all those directories, because they'll, it'll show up at the bottom of each episode. So here's my blog post up here. Here's my HTML5 MP3 player so people can listen to it right in their browser. And then right below it are the links to find that in all the directories that I've submitted it. Inobtrusive, people do page and they type iTunes, it'll show up, whereas the icon, the widget, probably won't. And so it's small, inobtrusive, and very informative. So now you've published your podcast, people are listening to it. If you're like me, you're doing this because you have a big ego and low self-esteem and you want people to listen to you. So how do you know if they are or not? iTunes and all the other podcast directories, they don't actually track how many people are listening to your show. Apple doesn't give you those statistics because they don't have it. But Blueberry PowerPress does. They actually keep track of all your MP3 downloads for you. They have some basic analytics you can access for free, and then they have some premium analytics you can listen, you can get for five bucks a month. The free ones are sufficient for me. So you just set that up in your PowerPress settings, in your WordPress dashboard. You just fill in a, a URL right there after you create your free Blueberry account. And then you can go to blueberry.com, log in with that account, and get all these great analytics. Here is how many people have downloaded my show, broken down by episode, so I can see which ones are the most popular and know, oh, I should have more guests on my show like that one. Here are the downloads by what software they used to capture it. Were they listening to it in the web browser? Were they using mobile applications? Were they using pod catchers? All this information is provided to you. I can even break it down by country. North America, unsurprisingly, is the most uh, popular one followed by uh, Europe, Canada, Germany, Australia, France, Sweden, mostly English-speaking countries, because that's the language of my podcast. If you have premium analytics, you can break this down further, such as by state. But on the free version, you can do just by country. So Blueberry Analytics are a very useful and free feature of this plugin. There's one other plugin I recommend, and this is entirely optional, but it's called Smart App Banner. It's in the plugin repository, it's free, and it's very helpful if you think people are going to be discovering your, sh your website through a mobile web browser, especially Safari. Let me show you what it does. If somebody were to come to my website in Safari on an iOS device without this plugin installed, this is what it looks like. That is episode number 50 of my podcast. They can listen to it right in their browser. They don't need a podcatcher. That works fine. But with this app installed, it's kind of like those websites that have their own apps. It tells you right at the top, hey, this website has an app. Click here to open it in the App Store. And it'll open it up in the podcast app on your iOS device. 
and you can click subscribe right there. And now you have a new listener for in perpetuity. They're going to download all your future episodes because you made it easy for them to find your podcast listing in the podcast directory. The one thing that Blueberry doesn't do for free that I really wish it did, and I understand why it's not free, is it doesn't provide your own app. Because for some people, subscribing to an RSS feed is still com complicated or beyond their comfort zone. But a lot of people do know how to install an app. And you can make an app just for your podcast. You can say, download my Polygamer app, download my IndieCider app, just install it, and it'll automatically get you all the future episodes. And there is a premium plan that Blueberry offers that can make that happen. It's anywhere from, I think, $20 to $60 a month, I don't remember. For my podcasts, which are not monetized, it's not within my budget. Uh, but if you do want to do that, it is an option that is available to you out there, but it doesn't happen in your WordPress dashboard. Five minutes? Great. So I provide you with a ton of great resources. I want to show you where to go to hear more or learn more about podcasting. The podcast method is a podcast about podcasting. It doesn't get much more meta than that. If you want to hear about what's the best equipment to use or how do you interview somebody, the podcast method is a great podcast to listen to. Libsyn is a podcast hosting platform, very similar to Blueberry. They want you to upload your MP3s to them. Uh, but beyond that, they're also, in fact, an entire CMS dedicated to podcasting. So if you're using WordPress, you don't want to use them. But this URL right here, pb403.org slash Libsyn, is an interview I did with their director of podcast relations. And he discussed not only his own platform, but also the emerging popularity of podcasting and how best to utilize this outlet. Six Colors is a blog by Jason Snell, formerly of Macworld. And not only does he have his own podcast, but he writes very frequently about how he does it. And if you go to that specific topic, sixcolors.com slash topic slash podcasting, that's the category where he has all those posts. And they're excellent. He goes over uh, specific software tricks, general software recommendations, uh, new microphones that he's trying, they're really, really great. <clears throat> and finally, Blueberry, which makes this PowerPress plugin, they have their own online manual for podcasting. Both general stuff that is not unique to their plugin and stuff that is. Like, here's how to use these features of our software. So I recommend all four of these additional resources. Uh, the Podcast Method podcast, the interview with Rob Walsh of Libsyn, Jason Snell's blog Six Colors, and the Blueberry Manual since they make the PowerPress plugin that I've been espousing. And that's pretty much it. That's everything you need to know about podcasting. I hope I still have three of those five minutes left because I'd love to take any questions. Yes? Do you use YouTube or do you recommend it? I do use YouTube. Uh, there are some ways I recommend not using it, like if you just put up a still frame of... Uh, because YouTube will not host just audio. It has to have some video to go with it. And it can just be a single photo or your album artwork followed by an hour of audio. I have not found that to be very interesting. I used to do talking head podcasts where I did Skype video and I would record both people as they were speaking and then I put that on YouTube and the audio as an audio podcast. And that didn't really add any value. If I want to take hours to edit it and add additional content such as showing off different things that we were talking about, that probably would have worked. But given my limited time and budget constraints, it didn't really add much. Some people will put a two-minute snippet of their audio podcast on YouTube and say, click here to listen to the rest. The people I know who have done that have not found it, generated many clicks. So I generally don't find it a good complement to an audio podcast. I do love YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel. I do a lot of fun stuff on there. But it's all distinct from my audio podcast. Uh, the one exception is if I'm interviewing somebody who made a video game, not only will I make that audio podcast available, but then I'll pair the audio interview with footage 
of the game that we're talking about. So you can watch the game being played while we're talking about it. And people do listen to that. That does get clicks. So, uh, you had a question? No, if this did the same thing, how do I force um, uh, YouTube to uh, get except podcasts? So they, they won't do it. They won't do just audio. They, yeah, they, that's not, they say that's not what they're doing. But I, I want, really want to get the podcast through YouTube, or at least one place where You don't want to go to separate podcasts and videos all in the same place instead of having to go to Well, I mean, on my website, I embed the video right above the audio podcast. And then I give people a link to my website and they get everything right there. So you can embed the content on your site so that they don't have to go to the hosted. Uh, basically, I want to have a quick just like. YouTube That sounds like a better fit for SoundCloud. SoundCloud does just audio and they actually have a podcast feed that you can just then you're not using Word. So, uh, when you use it I am not. Okay. Uh, Power, the only episode-specific metadata that PowerPress will let you apply is artwork. That's my thought. I think there's a way That's to make... That's why the media library is useful for add, if you want to add. Yes. So okay. you can use the Add to Server plugin to add it to your media library That's and then tag it in there. That. Okay. I just didn't know if there was yeah. a way I could skip a step. I don't think there is. Okay. I think there is a way for your podcast feed to your post's featured image as that MP3's album artwork so that you can change it for each episode. Yeah. But I think that's it. So, uh, okay. question? Voice memos? Oh, you mean to request? Yeah. I'll probably do that. The reason I like interviewing over Skype uh, is because we're for audio tracks. So if you're in Audacity, up here talk there's my guest here. holding an iPhone forth it's one track with on it and it's good to have it set because let's say that I'm something brilliant and this is being done over Skype you say something brilliant at the same time that I sneeze if they're separate audio tracks I can silence me without affecting you so you can keep talking and I sound completely silent Whereas if we're one audio track, there's no way to separate out what you said from my sneeze. So people either need to listen to me being gross, or I need to ask you to repeat it, or I need to cut out what you said. And so I actually prefer to have guests either in different rooms or to have two, uh, very, uh, two directional microphones. So there's one microphone for you, one microphone for me, and they're not picking each other up. So that way it is separate. I don't, I don't happen to have much equipment that does that. I just go the cheap route with a USB headset. Yeah. Uh, no? Can we, can we represent this side with one more question? This side hasn't said anything. So one question here. Um, Ken, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Um, lots of the times that I listen to podcasts, I've listened to something and I want to get back to it. So, but it's hard to find anything in a long, let's say, 60-minute podcast. Do you recommend? Transcribing it and having that available, or what are the other ways to have something available for you? So, the question is about transcription, and I find transcriptions invaluable. At Computer World Magazine, we had a daily five minute podcast that we would put up every day saying, Here's what happened in the world of technology yesterday. We had put up just the MP3 with a title, and that was it, and it got a thousand hits a day, which for Computer World was nothing. Then we started adding transcripts. It was the headline, the MP3 player, and then a full transcript, like 500 words, 
of what was actually said in that podcast. We went from 1,000 to 10,000 views every day because Google indexes written content, not spoken. And so the SEO value dramatically improved by having the transcript. Not only that, but it makes it accessible to a wider audience. My day job is at Mass Eye and Ear. Our doctors see a variety of people who don't have full use of their senses. If they want to listen to a podcast, that usually means getting the transcript of it. At Mass Eye and Ear, we're legally obligated to provide transcripts, and not just because it's the right thing to do. Unfortunately, transcription be, can be expensive. If you want to do it in-house, I recommend getting a transcription foot pedal, which helps with the interface, but it still takes a long time to transcribe something. I use a website called castingwords.com. They charge $1 per minute of audio content. So a one-hour podcast will t cost $60 to transcribe. Again, I don't monetize my podcast, and so I don't provide transcripts regularly. I just calculated last week, if I want to transcribe my last three years of podcasts, it would take $8,000, because I have 8,000 minutes of content over three years. Now, for a 10-minute podcast, that's 10 bucks. That's nothing. That's like a coffee at Starbucks. And it saves you like an hour of time, because transcribing is a pain in the butt. So I do recommend it in those contexts. But... If you want to do it on an ongoing basis, transcription, which, again, is both the right thing to do and legally beneficial, I would recommend finding a steady stream of revenue associated with your podcast, such as Patreon. So that's it. I'll be around afterward. And if you want to email me, my address is right up there. Thank you very much.